What's up, guys? I uh, hope you're all doing well. Uh, thank you once again for joining my channel. Uh, again, trying to make this a daily occurrence. And once again, I appreciate all your support. I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's video. I've not really checked to see if anybody has, uh, you know, maybe interacted much with it. But certainly, I appreciate it nonetheless. You guys have certainly been incredibly supportive, and I can't thank you enough for that. So uh, I hope we can keep it going now as we enter into day two. Uh, my second topic yesterday, we talked a little bit about uh, the name and image laws that potentially could come into play for college athletics. Today, we're going to stick with college sports in a sort of similar way, but perhaps go a little bit uh, more into, I guess you could say, athlete empowerment. And today we're going to talk about the NCAA transfer portal. Is it ruining sports or is it helping college sports? We're going to talk a little bit about that. Once again, guys, I thank you so much. And if you do like this video, please feel free to comment. Uh, even if you maybe you have a constructive criticism that you would like to put, feel free to comment that as well. Uh, likes, subscribes, and please share uh, if you know you find anybody or think of anybody that would perhaps like this. Uh, the more the merrier. So uh, to get back to our topic today, the transfer portal, for those of you that don't know, it used to be a system where if a collegiate athlete wanted to transfer, it was a leap of faith for them. They had, while they were still uh, under contract, under scholarship, basically, with their current institution, they were not allowed to have contact with somebody else. So what that required was that they had to kind of take a guess about where their best situation would be, both academically and athletically, among you know all, all of the, you know, the other things that maybe they would already know. So... The NCAA also used to have a situation where everybody was required, bar extenuating circumstances, to sit out at least one year and lose one year of eligibility if you decide to transfer. Not too long ago, the NCAA updated its transfer policies to say that now we're going to add a graduate transfer rule where players that have either graduated or I believe if they're even going to graduate in that semester and still have eligibility to play, they are allowed to transfer to another school and to play immediately. That sort of changed a lot of things as players began to try to push up graduation and for sure once they could graduate, looked for opportunities elsewhere. Flash forward to a couple years ago, fast forward to a couple years ago, the NCAA says we're now going to institute something called the transfer portal. Basically meaning that athletes, while under scholarship at one school, can say, I'm going to put my name in this portal. They're still allowed to come back. And they're saying that they are going to not necessarily confirm that they're transferring, but rather to make themselves eligible to do so to put their name out there and they can open up recruitment again. Schools can look at a database that has all of the players that are in the portal and are looking at a potential new school to play at. And they can talk to any one of those players and perhaps offer them scholarships, offer them, you know, the, the assurance of playing time and maybe starting if they want to. Um, but those are things that now can happen. And athletes want to take advantage of it, and rightfully so. But unfortunately, the flip side to it is that there's a lot of coaches who, strangely enough, in spite of taking advantage of it in terms of finding top-tier talent, they still are against this, which I find quite odd because you can take advantage of it, and most do, and find experienced players that they can bring in and ultimately they still turn around and almost in the same breath say, but it, it ruins the sport. I don't see it that way in the least bit. I think it is better to have a player make an informed decision about what they want to do with their life because mind you, so many of these kids that transfer through the portal, through all these other sports, not even just football or basketball, all of these sports, 
so few of them are actually going to go pro that they deserve the right to think about also their academics and what's going to make them happiest for perhaps the rest of their college experience. Every student deserves that, let alone student athletes. So they deserve the right to not have to just, you know, pick and perhaps look into the magic ball about where it's going to work out. Let them communicate with somebody. Let them talk to recruiters, to coaches. Let them have transparency. I don't understand when some coaches are saying that, oh, you know, this is ruining the game because like free agency. Well, guess what? It's not like those players are getting paid. It's not like those players are legally binded to you for their entire career. And especially when it comes time for the graduate transfers, which I, I should have specified earlier, undergraduate players still do, unless they obtain an NCAA permitted waiver, still do have to sit out and lose one year of eligibility. But every single player can utilize the transfer portal. But when it comes to graduate players specifically, because there's a lot of coaches and athletic directors that ridiculously, in my opinion, despise the graduate transfer rule. It's not a kid's fault that either A, they got injured, B, they took their academic coursework very, very seriously, or C, that you didn't play them, or even D, all of the above. That is on the school. That is not on a player. That is not on their family. And so they deserve the right to go somewhere that will value them, that will give them the opportunity. And I don't understand the reluctance of some coaches, athletic directors, commentators, fans, administrators. I don't get that because these are players that are taking control of their lives. They're taking control of their careers, of their academic future. And that's something that they should all have the opportunity to do. And I'm going to be completely honest. I don't like the idea that you have to sit out one year before you transfer. And I, I know to some that, you know, could basically wind up meaning that some players word will mean absolutely nothing when they commit. And that's not the case. But I look at it as though as a regular college student, if when you want to transfer at the end of the semester, you apply to a different school, if you gain admission as a transfer student to that school, get your transcripts, don't know that other university or previous university, anything, then you can go. And there's nothing holding you back. And you can begin classes at that new school the following semester. Athletes can begin classes. They can move on campus. They can move into the dorms, get the meal plans if they need to. But they can't play. They can't do what they are coming to the most to do there. And that is disappointing. I don't see the reason behind that, the merit behind that. And I don't understand what is causing the reluctance here. These are players that are not getting paid. The many are not clamoring to do so, even though maybe they do hope that they will. They're not getting paid. They're not employees, as the NCAA has stated so many different times, even though I quite frankly disagree with that. They're not financially compensated and they're not binded to you. So at the end of the day, if these are truly regular students, let them go. Let them have the transfer portal. Give them that transparency. Keep the graduate transfer rule exactly the way it is. It has been a great thing, in my opinion, for college sports. And completely waive this ridiculous and, I think, quite frankly, antiquated one-year penalty for undergraduate transfers who don't obtain an NCAA waiver, which only really a very small few think Justin Fields a few years ago, Tate Martell when he transferred to Miami, only just a few instances actually can, and it's extremely inconsistent what meets the NCAA's criteria for that. So I'm telling you right now, if I'm the NCAA, I'm not budging at all with this. I'm going to keep this the way it is, and if, or at least in terms of taking away transfer opportunities, and I'm going to give more transfer opportunities to those students because otherwise you might as well label them employees and you might as well start paying them. Something that the NCAA is so adamant that they won't do, even though, as we discussed yesterday, they should. But they won't. So until then, you have to give these kids the right to transfer, to play, to go to school, wherever they please, because it may not work out at school number one, 
And there may be a school that values them just a little bit more. All right, so I think we pretty much covered it for today, guys. I want to thank you so much once again for joining us on video number two. Uh, video number three coming up tomorrow. I honestly have to check what the topic is. I've written down like at least like seven or eight of these topics. So uh, just keep up with it. Um, you know, just keep, you know, hopefully, please, if you find the time, keep watching these videos. I greatly appreciate it. And, and I hope, you know, you guys are getting the same fulfillment and enjoyment out of it as possible. And if not, let me know what I can do better. I want to help. I know obviously there's a lot of people that, you know, could just use maybe some sort of distraction from everything, from everything that's going on right now. So I hope that I can help. I hope that I can be of any sort of uh, small assistance. And if anything, reach out to me. Uh, it doesn't even have to be about this, you know, but I'm always available uh, or as much as possible anyway, and I love to hear from you guys. So again, thank you so much for joining uh, today's video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and other than that, in a bit.